So, uh, you know, the goal, uh, what I'm going to do in the next five, ten minutes uh, is to give you an overview. I don't think this is working. Oh, it's a, it's a mic for the camera. Do you want a... Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, maybe he needs <laughs> the, those on the, in the back of me. There's a, a pickup here. Alex, do you know how this works? <laughs> there used to be a separate yeah. yeah, actually. Yeah, that's, 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 that's it. Okay. Okay, it works now. This is here? Yeah. Do I need to stay here? Yeah, unfortunately. Okay. All right, so I will. St uh, <laughs> Try to stay here. <laughs> uh, here is again an overview of what we are planning to do. Uh, the hands-on workshop on computation has been, uh, and these are the two groups that are leading this effort: the theoretical and computational biophysics group, TCBG, and you have already met with Juan and the two uh, teaching assistants. And the National Center for Multiscale Modeling of Biological Systems, short name is Emma Bios, which uh, we are, which is a joint effort here in Pittsburgh between multiple institutions. So these are both uh, biomedical technology and research centers, BTRCs, or sometimes they also call them biomedical technology and research resources, BTRRs funded by NIH. So one uh, mission of those uh, BTRRs is, uh, of course, to accelerate research, to help uh, build new technology, but also to promote collaborations. And training and dissemination is a very important component. So I would like to say that upfront, that what we are aiming here is not only to communicate you know, some of the latest developments in our uh, software technology development, but also to create an environment that hopefully will be conducive to collaboration. So it's good that there are people from different backgrounds, NMR, uh, spectroscopist, or biochemistry, or system mathematics. And uh, we're hoping that this will uh, lead to a nice conversation. And the end of this week won't be the end of our interaction. Okay, So that is uh, something important I want to emphasize. Now let me first talk uh, briefly about the TCBG at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Uh, TCBG is much older than us. We were founded in, uh, the MM BIOS was founded in 2012. TCBG was founded in 1989. So it is, uh, it has been, uh, since then it has been continually funded by NIH. And uh, in addition to other funds from other sources, of course. And what Klaus uh, wanted to promote was to bring physics to life. So those of you who are from this physics background, you should really feel very comfortable here. Physics, engineering, math, it's excellent. Uh, not to mention, of course, biochemistry or biology. <laughs> so unfortunately, we don't have him today with us. Uh, many of you may already know him. He is certainly a pioneer in the field. And he has uh, been amazingly productive, published many, many papers, not only in quantity, but also in quality. Uh, here is a, a one of his research, uh, recent, well, it was in 2014 or 15, a year or two years ago, HIV capsid, I think a year ago, uh, resolution. It's, uh, it was the largest uh, structure resolved to date by actually cryo-EM, cryo-electron microscopy, in a, by a colleague here in Pittsburgh in our structural biology department. And they have uh, even another follow-up study on that. Maybe Juan is going to talk on that, right? So that is one of the classical now cases which shows how uh, experimental technology, cryo-EM, and computational technology, in this case NAMD and VMD, how they could come together 
to uh, gain a better understanding of the molecular structure and function of a viral capsid. The virus is HIV in this case. So you, uh, I thought I updated that, but uh, the software citations, two major software, some of you may already know uh, about them, but otherwise the purpose here is to familiarize with them. The first two days we will be focusing on NAMD and BMD. Uh, these numbers are even much higher right now. The number of citations to the original NAMD paper is above 8,000 and BMD is about 15,000 for sure. BMD is for visualization. So in, uh, that's something important also. It's not enough to write a software. It has been uh, powerful. But uh, what Klaus did, Klaus and collaborators, they've spent a lot of time in facilitating the usage of this type of software, making it more comprehensible. And uh, of course, visualization is extremely important. And VMD is the visualization plugin of uh, software that comes with NAMD, but which is also used in many other software, as you will see uh, on the fourth day, we're going to talk about Prodi, a new so so uh, software that we've developed, which has uh, right now 50,000 unique users. We are really thrilled to see that it's so broadly used. But we also took advantage of the VMD interface for visualization, so that's a big resource. Now, uh, the first two days, uh, Juan will talk about, uh, in general, about uh, these two uh, very basic and broadly used uh, software. Then on the third day, we're going to have uh, Zen, uh, Klaus's wife, actually, visiting uh, and teaching the third uh, uh, day's lectures. And then the way the workshop is organized, we have lectures here in the morning. And then in the afternoon, we go to the next room where you have all uh, the computers set up. Uh, and you have uh, some you know, interactive hands-on session. But also, we would like to be as interactive as possible during the lectures. So you are more than welcome to interrupt or to ask questions. And this is always very useful. Now, whenever someone asks questions, at least 10 others ben benefit. So please be sure to do that. So Zen has also a physics background, uh, but in uh, recent years, he ha she has been uh, moving more and more to larger scale systems, not only molecules, but cellular systems, entire organisms. And she came up with uh, many different uh, models and methods to facilitate the simulation of their dynamics. So. Uh, she will talk about uh, these new methodologies, which have found very wide applications. So some of you may be familiar. Uh, we all actually started from small molecules. You know, uh, but given the significance of cooperativity in biological processes, it's not enough to consider only a single molecule, but we would like to see the interactions or uh, what the behavior in the context of the cellular environment. So that's why uh, there is a you know, movement, there is a, a trend toward exploring larger and larger size systems, large assemblies like the viral capsid or entire uh, organisms. OK. So I, uh, you may have seen this image already. And I'm sure Juan will, will talk about that too in his <laughs> lecture. Uh, that is a classic, another apparent classical study. Again, a collaboration between our uh, structural biology department and Klaus Schulten's lab on understanding the way bacteria move uh, to uh, get food, for example, the process of chemotaxis, the motion stimulated by some stimuli. 
So that is, uh, uh, you know, the structure was determined by uh, a professor in here in structural biology by Cryo Yam, P. Jun Rang. And uh, Klaus and collaborators, including Juan, have been uh, simulating their dynamics. One important concept is structural data is very important. We, this is like our starting point. But it's only a small part of the story. By molecular, by molecular system structures, they function because they are dynamic, because they move. Uh, they change conformations. So it is extremely important to e examine, analyze what are the potential movements, structural changes. And that is, of course, what we are doing here within the scope of this workshop. So, and we are very grateful to all of you who are determining structures, by the way. That's why I was emphasizing, oh, you're an X-ray crystallographer or an NMR spectroscopist. But uh, this is, and then we use those data to build our models. You've already met one. And now let me talk a little bit about MMBIOS. This is an initiative uh, with the overarching biological theme of understanding the spatial organization and temporal evolution of neurosignaling systems. And lately, we have also uh, focused on immune system signaling, immunosignaling. This is a joint effort between the University of Pittsburgh, uh, the Salk Institute of Biological Studies at San Diego, Carnegie Mellon University, CMU, and of course, uh, the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. So this is, uh, what we're trying to do in this center is to fill the gap between molecular and higher uh, level descriptions of biological systems. So we move from small molecules to subcellular regions or even lar larger, you know, multiple cells, multiple neurons in here. In this case, you can see the neural circuitry. And one thing I would like to bring to your attention is the scale uh, we are talking about. Here what you're seeing, and I heard many of you interested in membrane proteins, that is a transporter, glutamate transporter, viewed from the extracellular region from top. It has a trimeric shape. And around you have the membrane lipid molecules. So uh, we're talking about a length scale of 13 nanometer here, okay? In this case, uh, we have actually multiple uh, neurons. Uh, there's some, they are dendritic spines, axons. This is quite a you know, complicated structure called a neuropil. And the size uh, is of the order of micro, microns. And here we're talking about uh, uh, ser serial EM images. And this is almost uh, na uh, millimeters. We are approaching that size of millimeters. So we're talking about different scales. And the challenge right now, the challenge in uh, research is to understand the molecular basis of events that we observe even at the organ level, the entire brain, for example. So the breach between those scales, this is a challenge. And there are very well developed methodologies for those individual uh, scales. But this is like, you know, uh, these, it looks like these are all different disciplines. We're trying to merge everything. We're trying to integrate all those efforts. So that's what MMBIOS is about. Our training and dissemination efforts are led by uh, two uh, leaders. Alex is there. Alex Rokolevsky. Alex, you want to introduce yourself instead of me saying a few words? <laughs> well, I talked a little bit about myself before you left. Uh, oh, you did? Time, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but my, uh, I've, I've been involved in, in uh, training efforts here at the center um, almost since the center started. Uh, started at the center in 1989 and have been involved in training at the center uh, ever since.
PSC. Do you have Alex's email? Okay, great. So you know uh, uh, who, uh, and you can contact all of us actually. You can easily find our email addresses on the uh, web if you need it. So Alex is, uh, uh, he's, he didn't mention that, but he was also the recipient of the very prestigious Carnegie Science Award for all his uh, contributions to uh, science education training. Uh, he has been directing uh, the MARC initiative. Are you familiar with that? MARC is for, uh, I think this is probably a picture from that, for uh, training educators or scientists in minority serving institutions. So he has made a tremendous contributions to society as a um, bioinformatician dedicated to training new generations of computational biologists. Joe uh, is a faculty member in our department, Computational and Systems Biology. Uh, he also distinguished himself by many uh, educational and training activities. He's really uh, very dedicated to training new generations of uh, scientists. His background is actually, he's an experimentalist in neuroscience, neurobiology, but he is the perfect person also to, uh, you know, bridge between the computational and experimental communities. He's been teaching a wet lab course to our computational biology students. So it is, uh, he, he's really amazing. And I think he's also running something called Tech Bio, and right now we have many students uh, through within the scope of an REU program, research and education for undergraduates. So here is a snapshot from last year. Okay, a few MM BIOS resources that we have, and uh, I'm going to talk on that on the fourth day. Uh, one of them is the anisotropic network model web server. Uh, we called it 2014 because that's when we. Uh, gener uh, you know, launched a new version, but it was published in 2015. It, that was it. <laughs> but we still call it 2014. So that is, uh, as you will see, that's a very, very handy uh, uh, s server for if you have any any protein, favorite protein of yours, and you enter uh, enter the PDB code, you're gonna see how it moves. You can see visualize immediately movies animations. So we will uh, we'll talk on that. And another resource that we built recently is a database of, again, protein motions using the Gaussian network model. So the anisotropic network model or Gaussian network model are models that we introduce in our lab. And this is, again, a new version of it uh, recently published. So these are really the <laughs> most recent things that are now being used. Of course, an important, another important uh, uh, API, API is application programming interface, will be Prodi with multiple features. And we'll uh, spend some time on that. Uh, that, is the, that will be the major focus of our uh, fourth day lecture and hands-on session. And at the, on the fifth day, we will talk on uh, Daniel Zuckerman will talk on WESPA, which is an efficient trajectory sampling methodology for uh, sampling rare events. Some, one of you was mentioning he's interested in viewing rare. <laughs> okay, so that will be, uh, I think the fifth day will be hopefully meeting your expectations. Now, again, a very brief outline of the program. Uh, today, we're going to have introduction to protein structure and dynamics. Uh, uh, tomorrow, again, uh, Juan will continue with the statistical mechanics of proteins and force field parameterization. On Wednesday, uh, Dr. Luthi Schulten, we call her Zen, <laughs> will introduce evolutionary concepts, network analysis, and cell simulations. I'll be teaching on uh, the fourth day. It will be 
on collective dynamics of proteins using elastic network models. And then finally, the last day, we're going to have Dan talking on uh, statistical mechanics of trajectories, the weighted ensemble method. Okay. And uh, let me take this opportunity to also introduce a few assistant instructors. They call themselves TA. I call them assistant instructors because there is a lot of instruction <laughs> instructing in their role. So you've already met uh, Yi and Muyun in the back. So, and Jihan also is here uh, from my lab. And uh, we have also many other uh, uh, postdocs, uh, research assistants, or PhD students who will be around to help you during the hands-on sessions. So the goal will be, it will be to you know, uh, make sure that you are able to practice uh, or repeat whatever is happening. So it's, we would like to be as interactive as possible. Ernesto and Justin are from the lab of Dan, Dan Zuckerman. The last day he, they will come. Carolina is from my lab. So we will, uh, uh, you will see them, uh, you will interact more closely with them in the afternoons. But we'll be around too. And uh, one other thing, uh, this presentation, uh, we are, I'm going to make this presentation accessible so you can see the names of the individuals, the uh, links to the major tutorials. You may already have seen them, but uh, in case, for the first two days, uh, you can uh, three days, you can find the tutorials on NAMD, VMD uh, in, uh, through this website. And then uh, for day four, we will be mostly focusing on Prodi, but also on the ANM and I, uh, GNM uh, server and database. I think that's it. That's what I wanted to mention. And the lecture we start is supposed to start at 9, so we're doing well. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'll be more than happy to answer a few questions if you have any. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my pleasure now to invite one.